then you spent five grand and made 15 grand. Warren Buffett would want your autograph. I'm Greg Luther, excited to be with you here today. We've got some awesome stuff we're gonna be covering, bouncing around on a couple of websites here to show you some cost-effective lead generation. I think you're going to find this to be incredibly helpful for you here. Uh, should have on the call with us here, Nicole. How are you doing today, Nicole? I am good. Hello, hello, everybody. I feel like it's been a while since we've been on a call, but it's not. I think we're just so busy with everything yeah, else. Yeah, absolutely. It's. Uh, I don't think a lot of people realize how many hours and hours and hours we put into this. I mean, there's many times, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, uh, we're still working on this stuff. And uh, not only the logistics of everything, but content. What's the best way to teach this to them? How can I make sure they implement this in their business? Today, we're going to talk a little bit about cost-effective lead generation, uh, exactly what you need to do to find the best quality prospects, which today is sellers, uh, as it has been for a while, but for different reasons. So uh, one thing you guys may not realize, I was talking to a couple of my Platinum members earlier today. Actually, it came up with two of them. Uh, the topic of inventory issues. And if you look at the real problem we have in our marketplace, we still, even though rates are crazy high compared to where they were, they're still normal, right? If you've been selling for 30 years, you know, it's like this is exactly average, uh, but they're much higher than they were. And even though that's the case, we have a ridiculous number of buyers that can't find homes. Even though homes are grossly overpriced and when my mom bought a house, it was only $32,000 and now it's 3.2 million and all that crap you're hearing, there's still qualified buyers that are ready to buy now. We're still dealing with multiple offers uh, in some cases, uh, nowhere near as crazy as it was, but that's still happening. And the problem is inventory. The problem we have now is people have two and a half, three percent rates. They won't sell their house. They're holding on to it. They're becoming landlords because they're like, I'm not going to sell this thing. It's cheap money. It's two percent, three percent mortgages. I'm going to unknowingly become a landlord. I didn't even know this was the route I was going to end up going. So in my opinion, if rates go down, people will start to sell again. Right. If if rates are four and a half, five percent, they'd be like, oh, well, I'll just sell this thing and buy another one. And I don't want to deal with the whole landlord stuff. So there is a lot of people that our agents are talking to that are thinking of selling and they end up keeping it or renting it. Uh, so that's one of the problems with inventory is people just don't want to sell what they have. Coming up, we'll be talking about, uh, you know, the perfect offer or the home run offer that you should be using with each type of client. So I'm setting up a whole session where we'll be covering that on fixing what it is you offer to the public so they're interested in you to begin with, right? But once you have that dialed in and you put it on a sales letter or a postcard or you got it on a QR code that goes to a video or whatever it is that you're doing that you can get it out to the public, you gotta think about how can I get it out cost effectively and earn the kind of money that I want to earn. So uh, EDDM is the best way to do that, right? Every door direct mail is the best way to get that out from a postcard, sales letter, jumbo card, package, whatever it is you want to send. Every door direct mail is by far the, the most cost effective, the cheapest way to do so. Uh, and when you look at the math behind this thing, why would you ever invest in anything else on the planet? You can't flip houses with a $70,000 profit and make more money than you could make from postcards. If the offer is good, go into the right people. It's set up correctly. You know how to handle your funnel. Like there's no way you would make money, uh, more money than what you're doing here. So what we're going to do is jump on USPS.com, which is... United States Postal Service. This is the government ran agency, which means it sucks and it's horrible and it's slow and it's so bad they literally call it snail mail. Um, I think you could ride a bicycle there faster than sometimes it gets there. Uh, but USPS, United States Postal Service, does the um, does the uh, uh, every door direct mail. Now, if you're not familiar with what this is, this is no address on your postcard or your sales letter. There's no address. There's no name. There's no going to an individual house. 
There's none of that. It's literally a bundle of them goes on the mailman's truck and they say, deliver it to everybody on your route today. That's what every door direct mail is. Now, here's the cool part, and I don't want you to miss this. This was designed, number one, so the post office can find something that actually makes money to get people to mail again. But it was designed for the dry cleaner around the corner, for the ice cream shop, for the uh, karate lessons for your kid, for Molly made cleaning service. This is who it was designed for. It was designed for companies that make 200 bucks when they get a client or make $30 when they get a client. If a client comes in or if a, a family comes in for ice cream, they'd be lucky to make 30 bucks on that person. So the advantage for us is the profit margin is phenomenal. I can literally spend 800 bucks and get back more than 8,000. We can literally do that every single time if offer is working and that type of thing. So uh, when you go to USPS.com, what you'll do is hover over business. See this across the top here? You'll hover over business and you'll click on every door direct mail. Okay. Now, of course, you can go back and watch this recording and all of that stuff as well. Okay. So don't worry about, oh my gosh, I missed where he went or whatever. We're just hovering over business and we click on every door direct mail. Now, what you're going to do here. The best way to do it, this is the best way for you to really learn how this works. Put in your own zip code right here. Just put in your own zip code and uh, hover over and find your street. And you will see every single house that your mailman delivers to. So what I'll do is I'll put in uh, my old address. This is the one I've used on previous trainings. And this is all on the member site as well. Uh, you know, we've done trainings like this before. So uh, up in Ohio, in New Albany, Ohio. This is the city of New Albany. So I'm going to zoom in. Uh, here's the zoom. So I'm zooming way in. And if we look at, let me see if I can find this. Uh, trying to remember where I was. Here we go, right here. So this carrier route right here, you guys see where that's highlighted? So the house I was in was literally right here, okay, at the bottom of this little circle, if you can see my cursor. That's the house I was in. That's on a street called Tall Oaks Drive in New Albany. This was seven years ago. Okay, So I was on a street called Tall Oaks Drive. Now, when I hover over this, I can see every single house that my mailman delivers to. This happens to be a neighborhood called Harrison Pond. So see, he's not hitting these houses on Harrison Pond. That mailman does that, and he's got all kind of weird routes. Look, he's going across three main roads and does this weird stuff over here, too. Right. But if I wanted to hit this neighborhood, this is the pond of Harrison. This is Harrison Pond right here. Uh, but the neighborhood is called Harrison Pond. If I wanted to deliver to this entire neighborhood, look at the top. See the banner right up here where it says residential. There's 599 homes, three businesses. It's probably people that work from home, an accountant or something, uh, which means there's 602 total. Uh, and I can mail to them for $113.78. Nicole, how much is every door direct mail per house right now? I guess you could do the math on that, but you probably know the number. Yeah, it comes to, for the postage, it comes to about 18.9 cents as your 18 postage. Cents, 19 cents a house. Yep. Yeah, so let's call it 18 cents a house or 19 cents a house is all it costs. And you can send something this big. I think you're allowed to go to 32 inches or so. I can't remember exactly what it is. Nicole probably knows that, but you can send something huge where they got to roll it to put it in the mailbox. It's not like a little by postcard. 12. 15 by 12? Yep. Okay, so 15 by 12. Um, so that was like guy measurements. This is 15 inches, right? <laughs> so this is, it's 15. So, um, but uh, that is a huge piece. That's, you know, really uh, 11 by 17 almost. So that is... Two pieces of paper, that's almost this big, one piece. So um, you can really send just about anything, but you can choose the carrier route you want to send to. Some of them don't work. So like I was saying, this one here, that's not really in one individual neighborhood. Now, the cool part about it, and I want you guys to see this, is it also shows median income. See this up in the top right corner? It's not right. From what I've seen, it's always low as well, but we can actually test it here because I know New Albany. The farther you go north, the higher their income is. 
So let's see, here's 197, here's 239, 211, 202. We get up in here, should be a lot higher and see that's wrong. Yeah, see 211. And I know that's right. These, these homes run seven to $15 million a piece. Les Wexner lives up there and that type of thing. But in all fairness, a lot of them are retired or pay themselves $1. But they have 70, like, you know, uh, uh, Elon Musk pays himself $1. So, uh, you know, that would affect some of that as well. But it shows you a little bit of the affluency in that market area. And most mailmen deliver to about 500 homes. If you look at all these, there are about 500 homes. So that's how you can mail to them. And I just clicked on that when I was just hovering. I clicked on it, which makes it blue. Uh, so it turns out the mailman's not only delivering these, he's also delivering some individual houses on this main road. You see that, the blue? He's delivering to those as well. Uh, I would call that throwaway. I would still send something to them that says Harrison Pond, uh, even though it's throwaway. They'd be like, I don't live in Harrison Pond. I don't care. You're 12 houses out of 500, so not a big deal. It's the burners that we would be throwing. So uh, very simple to do. And again, if you look up your own area or your own zip code, you can see where your mailman delivers. That's the actual route. And by the way, that is the route number. So if you look in that top left corner, 43054-R004. So when mailmen or male women or male they, thems, whatever they are, uh, when they are talking to each other, they talk to each other in this language. Oh, you deliver to R004? Yeah, I deliver to R007. We're not too far apart. Like they know their routes like we know MLS areas, right? We know those areas, it's internal tribal language. But that is the route you use when you have your printer doing the mailing for you. And yes, printers will do all of it. They will print it, stuff it, get it ready, mail it out to the post office. They'll do everything for you so you don't have to touch it. So it's a very cost-effective way. Keep in mind, this is designed uh, right over here. Let me see. Right over here is a little ice cream, uh, a really nice ice cream place. Uh, it's called Grader's Ice Cream. They do marketing with every door direct mail to all of these houses around here. Why? Because they want to pick up 30 bucks. But they get several families that go. They can build more business, and people keep coming back for ice cream. If you've had that ice cream, Oprah Winfrey says it's the best ice cream she ever had. Trust me, she knows ice cream. So this is a really cool way for you to make eight, 10, 12, $15,000 for every one client that replies. So let me ask you, if it costs you, let's look at this area or this zip code here. If it costs you $1,000 to mail to this one and a thousand 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 to this one, let's say you spent $5,000 and you got one freaking seller, a, a hundredth of 1% response rate, the worst in the world, and you spent five grand and made 15 grand. Warren Buffett would want your autograph. No human on the planet can triple capital that quickly. Keep in mind, the only thing you do in business is try to multiply capital. I want to make sure you understand that as a real estate agent, as any business, but as a real estate agent, your goal is to use advertising to multiply capital. See, you thought your goal was to sell houses, to represent the client, to do a really good job so that they refer. That's all part of it. That's the mechanics of what we're doing. But as CEO, when you put CEO hat on, your goal, as every business's goal, the gas station that buys Snickers candy bars for 30 cents and sells them for a dollar, their goal is to multiply capital. That's what your goal is. So from a marketing perspective, if I go crazy ridiculous and say you sent 5,000 and got one sale, which is never going to happen, if the offer is good, if you've chosen the right areas, that type of thing. And that $5,000 turned into one closing. What do you want to do? Go buy stocks? 
go buy an investment property because you can cash flow $212 a month, but you have $2,400 in repairs per year. And then you realize that I'm actually break even and then damn it, they're moving out. So I got a month of vacancy. So, well, I guess technically it's buying down, go get 15 grand, do it three times next month, do it seven times the next month. That's how you get rich. Uh, Nicole, what are your thoughts on this EDDM? Now, by the way, for those of you that don't know, Nicole has been with me for 700 years or so. She's been with me for a long time, over a decade. Um, several years ago, I got a divorce, moved uh, not from Nicole, but from a mutual friend. Uh, I was probably more friendly with her than she was because uh, we were married. But uh, I got a divorce several years ago, moved back up to Ohio. This was before Zoom, before COVID. So there was no way to run a business and like that virtual stuff just didn't work. So Nicole actually went to work for the printer that we used in Tampa and did that for a few years. So she knows the whole inner workings of EDDM and print and how to work with the post office and all of that stuff. And then when uh, Zoom became prevalent, I'm like, hey, I can have you back now and we can work in different locations as we do now. Uh, so she's been with me for years and years here. Uh, but the advantage is, she got to see the inner workings of print side, how that stuff works, how you can get the right measurements and weights and uh, offers and what's working and what's not. And, you know, it's a huge advantage as I have uh, to see thousands of agents getting results or not getting results. Nicole has seen that as well on various offers. So, Nicole, what are your thoughts on what you see here? I know you've done millions of pieces this way. Yeah, I mean, this has been something that if I if the consistency is there, and even if you start with, I know Greg threw out if you do 5,000 a month, but for those of you who just freaked out and panicked, even if you have consistency with one neighborhood and that's your consistency, I saw the just the results because of the reorders coming in. So when I was on the print side, I knew who it was working for because they were reordering. I knew who was doing it correctly. I would guide them on that uh, because of that consistency. And then also um, just what we make available on the member site, we already have it done for you. Um, so there's the six by 11 card. There's the eight and a half by 11. Those are your two primary. Back in the day, we actually did, Greg, you remember the big letters we put on the 15 by 12? Um, oh, yeah. But those, but those got curved up and put into the uh, post office. Kind of funny. Yeah. Um but or the mailbox kind of funny so they're curly but um the amount of money that could be made with this is is huge with that consistency and there's going to be a lot of questions that you're probably already thinking scanning some of the questions coming in it could probably hit a lot of them right away you do have to choose the whole route as greg mentioned there's overlap so it might cross over the street that goes into another neighborhood name so say you have doves landing and turtle lakes and even though your goal is turtle lakes but there's a little bit that flows over to Dove's Landing, you, you have to do the whole route. So you can't just choose the Turtle Lakes portion. You have to do the whole route. The only exclusion that is helpful though, because there are some routes that have a lot of businesses on them, you can exclude businesses. And there is a little uh, menu drop down on that screen where you could change it from residential to business. So that's the only exclusion they allow. And again, you don't know if it's Bob Smith or Mary Jenkins or whoever lives there, you don't need names and addresses um, because it goes to that whole route. So the post office, as Greg mentioned, they all talk in route numbers. They know who lives there and you're, excuse me, you don't need to know who lives there because they're sending to the whole route. So you're able to just tackle this seamlessly without needing to address envelopes or address postcards or do a, a mail list broker for this scenario. So yeah, uh, we yeah. And there's a, a, you know, keep in mind, most agents only do one or two routes. They'll spend $500 or $1,000 or something like that. You know, I mean, I'm just showing you that because by the way, uh, I don't think anybody will question this you are guaranteed to get at least a deal out of 5,000 as opposed to sending 500. Maybe I'll get business, but maybe I literally won't. Maybe out of that whole 500, not one of them lists this month. Not one of them doesn't list with any brokerage this month because it's a small scale. It's only 500, right? So there's a chance that not one person in that neighborhood is going to list this month. But if I send a 5,000, 
and I've got a good offer, I'm going to do very, very well. Because keep in mind, a lot of times it's that your offer sucks. Hey, it's Greg Luther. And listen, if you don't follow this channel, there's a good chance you're never going to see me again. I consistently put out regular content and it's extremely helpful for real estate agents to grow their business. I want to keep you up to date on what's working so that you're in the know and you can take action accordingly. So be sure that you like and comment here, but most importantly, make sure you follow, share, and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on anything. I'm here to help you in growing your business, and I'd love to do so. Follow right now.